Hello 14 day challengers. We're going to combine an exercise today. So I know when you started I said just choose one song and we'd go from there and we'd keep building on it. Um, for you advanced players, because it's going to be really straightforward for you, I would like you to learn the Highland Lullaby. It's the tune beginners did on the first day. So last Thursday we played Highland Lullaby, which sounds like this. tune. What I'm having you do, if you are a beginner and um, lower intermediate, you are focusing entirely on what we used to call, or what uh, some teachers refer to as, the Chrysler Highway. Fitz Chrysler, as opposed to Chrysler the car. But the Chrysler Highway is right here, right over those F holes, keeping your bow perfectly in line. And the reason we named it the Chrysler Highway, not we, I can't take credit for that, the reason it was named the Chrysler Highway is if you go into any black and white footage on YouTube and just uh, type in Chrysler violin, you will see that the man is like a machine with the accuracy of his right hand. So he was an amazing uh, classical violinist and when he pulled that bow it was laser straight. It is almost scary to see how accurate he was. So. We're lining up over the F holes. We want a laser straight bow as we're playing. And the way that works with our body is when you're pulling your bow in front of you, you wanna make sure that those fingers extend. So see my middle finger, it extends straight in front of my belly button. So when I pull my bow down, I'm straight in line with my center. So when I'm playing A, A2, two, two, E, E2. See how my arm extends in front of me instead of A, A2, 2, which is where we get that rocking bow or it will give us a funky squeak. So if you're a beginner or a lower intermediate, I want a razor straight bow over the F holes. advanced you are focusing on a learning the tune which you'll have in two seconds then focus on extending in front of you and I had a student yesterday morning Cindy who will remember I had told her um, she plays on a 7 8 violin and she and I both have slightly smaller arms so uh, you would go as far as your arm extended but you don't have to use up to the end of the bow so for you that might go up to here and then you would go back again otherwise you find that you compensate from the shoulder so if you have slightly smaller arms um, go as far as your arm is comfortable and then stop so that your bow doesn't go crooked on you all right last thing Advanced players, you're now taking the challenge further. So you've played and learned the song in first position. Your focus is entirely on keeping your neck, your shoulder, your right arm, hand and wrist absolutely loose and flexible. And I'm having you shift. So you're playing A, A, C sharp, C sharp, third position, E, E, C sharp, E, E, C sharp. E, C sharp, B. So it's going to look like this. And this is why I want you to do it. Because I want this movement absolutely fluid and no tension in the hand whatsoever that would stop you from getting up into third position and in tune. So it's going to look like this. Shift. Second finger on the E. So I'm focusing entirely on keeping that wrist nice and relaxed. I don't have my wrist compensating to hold the violin. My chin and my shoulder are holding the violin. 
and by about 75% of the weight. I'm holding maybe 25% of it between my thumb and the first finger, so I'm nice and relaxed. And my movement up is completely unobstructed. There's no tension holding me back. So that is your exercise today for day five. We'll see you tomorrow for day six and let me know if you have any questions. See you then. Bye-bye.